yes, we can elaborate on this. You see, it is a comparison from last year and this year that um, we gave out in the newspaper for people to see what is being done by the police in January. For example, the number of theft and uh, burglary also rose slightly from um, six, uh, 1,684 to 1,693. So the difference is not so um, so great, not so big that you will say so much about it. But even so, less 158 compared to 184. Um, we saw for a percentage of 9.33, which is very good. The number of other cases, mostly petty crimes handled by the uh, juridical department, um, went down from 111 to 722 or 72. But the solvent percentage also improved from 55, 85% to 57, 838%. The 55, 85% is from this year or last year, and the other one is from um, 95. Okay, in January the number of cases went down only slightly from 2,615 to 2,628, which you see again is not so big, but now it is very slight. While the general solvent percentage decreased from 25, 65% to 24, 46%. So you see, it is a, it's a game, no? Like you solve here, you put a lot of tension in the petty crimes, while over there is increasing, and then when you put more attention in the big crimes, you know, then the other one um, decreases. So um, it is a question of what they have the priority at that moment. The number of weapons confiscated also remains very stable, which um, uh, we can say uh, 45 compared to 48 in 95. And um, we confiscated about nine pistols, five revolvers, 11 rifles. 18 alarm pistols, one semi-automatic weapon, and even one grenade. You see? The months of drug-related arrests were down considerably from 182 to 101. So uh, again, not like I just said, it is sometimes you, the arrest is big, but the amount of drugs confiscated is less. But um, in this case, the arrest was less, but the amount of drugs was bigger than last year, uh, 95. Um, so, it don't mean that, for example, you arrest a person, three person, and you uh, confiscate about um, only 10 kilo, while you arrest one person who have about 100 kilo. So, it is a comparison, it is not about the amount of drugs you confiscated. Uh, also, um, what we can say is, um, that the drugs that were confiscated were mostly um, that we get is 187 kilo of marijuana compared to 175 kilo from 95. Um, 32 plant marijuana plants compared to 30 in 95. 7.9 kilos of heroin compared to 4.2 kilos in 95. And two LSD and one um, XTZ uh, tablets was confiscated last year. So. Um, Statistic-wise, you see, it went up, but the, sometimes there's a season where um, the crime goes up and then it comes down. But this year, um, we have noticed that it went up a little bit, a little too high. Mr. Juliet, what is done with the weapons? We know what's done with the drugs that are confiscated. Those are burned, but what are done with the weapons? The weapons, when confiscated, they will be destroyed after a while, um, before we used to... Um, like um, put bulldozers, now break and dismantle the, all those things, um, those, um, what do you call it, those... Um, weapons? Um, what do you say, the, the, all those I items on oh. the weapons, we destroy them and um, make them uh, not able for those uh, culprits. Okay. Is it repeat offenders or is it mostly illegals? Well, on this island, let me start like that, on this island, is still a lot, a lot of illegals, especially with a special unit when making special um, control, especially in the neighborhood of Dutch Quarter, the Guard of Freedom, and KB. When the patrol of the unit, special unit, reach there, you can see them run through the hills by thousands, not hundreds, by thousands. Just like, you know, um, it's just really a scary scene, you know, when you see all those kind of things. Still a lot of illegals on the island. 
um, if the crime is being committed by own illegals, um, I don't think so is that alone, because lately when the special unit was making arrest, it was arresting a lot of locals um, in different cases. Um, most of them are repeated offenders, you know, um, that after they come from the prison, after a while, you will see them again. And um, because we basically know their um, platform, how they operate it, uh, we have a good clue when a certain people is trying to do that or are doing those things in different areas. Okay. Is there enough patrols? And if not, what is being done to secure the security for the citizens of St. Martin? Well, uh, like everybody, it's not a public, um, um, we call it a public uh, secret that there's not enough patrol. There's not enough patrol. We don't have enough manpower. Uh, that's why we are running a campaign to see if we can get more police officer. We need more police officer to um, to defend this country because otherwise, um, you see, if it's a lot of crime on the island, what's going to happen is that we're going to lose all the um, tourists that are coming. We do all the promotion from abroad, and if crime is on the rise, we're going to scare the tourists and they will not come back to this island. But what are we doing is, we are doing a campaign so we can start with a program, as a program with auxiliary police, seeing the fact that we cannot get too much, uh, of, we can get police officers to go to study Crusoe. Um, we have started a, a program so we can start recruiting police officers, like a auxiliary police. They're going to assist the police, just like the Fika S or Fika C came from Curacao to assist the police. Because you see, the police are busy with too much other things that really is not really related to the job. Um, like, for example, go to the prison, bring the prison to the court, um, go look for the food um, for the prison. Um, make sure, um, go to a system for loud music, go to a system for um, sewage running in people's yards, and etc., etc. A lot of those things which you may see, um, it's not direct the police um, job. But we have to do it, and when you have patrols doing all kinds of things like that, it's a problem. And um, when the patrol goes out, most of the time, what we have is they go on calls. The central gives them a list, hey, when you finish to KB, go to St. Peter's for um, uh, 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 what you call it domestic problem. Um, go to um, KB. There is um, water running in people's yards. Go to um, um, Marigot Hill. There's a fight and things like that. You go with the, almost with a list on the road, and you're going from place to place. So what happened with the? Uh, you are meaning the action from last night? Yes. Okay. Um, as it is for sure that we planned some big traffic uh, traffic controls. In the meantime, <coughs> in the traffic controls, we go for uh, everything. We go for illegals. We go insurance of the car. We go for uh, uh, weapons, illegal weapons, illegal persons. So that big traffic control is um, there is involved the customs, the fake is the local police and everyone who has a role in investigation uh, a case. Um, so that's a normal thing we're going to do, which we're going to try to do it every week on, on, a, on a separate place. Mm -hmm. We were we, we uh, made to understand that there was one person who should have a knowledge of how the law works that were arrested because he himself had hired people that were illegal. You want to give us a comment on that? Yeah. You know, I'm very disappointed about that. What the prosecutor never wants to do is to cut in his own meat, to cut in his own body. But to show the people, the community, that the law is there for everyone. And I mentioned, since I came in on the island, the law is there for everyone. People have to come back to trust at least the employees working for government. This officer was working for what we call the island government. Uh, he knows the law very well because, beside this, he's a member of the FKS. Now, what you see that some people in the daytime 
help us, help the community to make clear that the law is there for everyone. In the night time, they are playing against the law. And to make sure that it is not allowed and to make sure that whatever your position is in the community, you are breaking the law, you are part of my office. And that has to be sure. Yeah, was this was uh, when you talked about the, uh, this officer? What did he do specifically that was illegal against the law? Okay, we have the law for the um, admission and the extradition. We call it in Dutch the toelating and out uh, outsettings uh, lands for ordinary. In that law, it is not allowed to have people working for you um, without a permission. That is the case, what happened last night, he had three guards, fully, fully illegal, and they were working for him. So at least you know that those people have no working permit, and you let them work for you. That's another thing I want to mention. We have some people who don't, who don't have the possibility to get a job on the island. They are married, they have kids, they are living in poor conditions. Why those, our people, don't have the possibility to get a chance to get a job as a security guard? What if the, if, if the, the, the owner of the security company is the playing, fooling around with the law and having illegals on the job, our own people never will get a job and never will get a chance. So it is bad from two sides. Bad because he is a government employee and he's breaking the law. And from a point of view of economic affairs, it's not fair to your own people to have illegals at work and our people who are working very hard, having, having uh, the struggle for life, don't have a possibility to get a job. Okay. Is, there any, is there any penalty for... So anybody who may have a business as well, who may get into this practice? Yes, there is a penalty that for every employee you have uh, uh, on, your, on your business working for you, everyone can be charged for 100,000 antillion florins. So that means in this case three times 100,000. It's not said that uh, it's going to go in that way. But at least, at the maximum, I have a possibility to go to 100,000. And what's the minimum? Uh, the minimum is five guilders, according to the law. But be sure, he, I will not go for the minimum. I will, I will show the community that we have to give a stiff, a stiff reaction to those things. Especially him being a government official. That's, that's right. And even what I mentioned, not to give your own people uh, our own people, a uh, real chance to work for the money. Can he fight this in court? Say it again. Can he fight this case in court? Yes, yes. You know, uh, I, more than once I told it, especially in the, the program um, Crime and, um, and the Law, I try to explain to the people how the law works. I make a decision. I have to make a decision. But you always can complain my decision uh, by the judge. So if you do not agree with my decision, you can go to the judge and the judge will look at it. And the judge makes his own decision. Could be that he uh, 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 complains with my decision, he agrees with it or something like that. But someone in this community has to put it the first step. And that's me. And that's the prosecutor. The prosecutor. Do you ever have any case thrown out? Yeah, say it again. As a prosecutor, do you ever have any case that the judge threw out of court? Uh, no, because they have, you have two, two possibilities. Uh, the prosecutor has the possibility to offer him a fine to pay. And if he's not willing to pay the fine, we're going to bring the case in court. So, let's see how it runs. The fire comes in in the afternoon. The head of immigration promised me 
and in the afternoon or tomorrow morning I'm going to make my decision. But be sure, that's not a load what he's doing. Is the suspect still in, in police custody? Yeah. The other thing is um, that uh, you have some, uh, some laws. You only can questionnaire for six hours a person and then you have to leave him out. Uh, if it is uh, allowed, according to law, to put someone in custody, that would be the next step. This law it has no possibility to put someone in custody. I just have the six hours for questionnaire, but that's enough for me. That's enough for me to make up my mind. Also continuing on this evening's program is an incident that took place Monday last, and that is the shooting incident in St. Peter's. The scenes are quite gross, though we often on TV see a lot of films that has similar scenes, yet we want to advise you that what you're seeing tonight is actually what took place in St. Martin. Uh, the movies are all makeup and everything, but this is real. Around 9.30, police got a call that there was a shooting incident that took place around the Rome's Catholic Church in South Three Ward. Mm -hmm. When the police went to the scene, they found a man who was laying on the carriage road just next to the Sister Basilia Center. The old Basilia Center. Correct, yeah. the old Basilia Center. And this man with initial P.O.S. Duran from Dominica, he's about 21 years old, had a bullet wound around the stomach area. Uh -huh. When police also find a ski mask around him, a black ski mask, which he was wearing most probably, and um, from people we got to know, that he was involved in a shooting incident which took place in the Arrow Route Drive uh, apartment just upstairs. So police went in that direction and there they found two men. One, a police officer, Wednesday Santiago, who had a shot wound around his left shoulder. And also they found a man with initial LP. And later on we get to know that it's Luis, Luis Posiano Custodio. He was there in a pool of blood and had to be transported to the medical center in the, where we call it um, a critical condition, seeing the fact that he lost a lot of blood on the scene. Both of his upper arms had big cut wounds, or shot wounds, if you want to say that, yeah. and um, it was bleeding profusely. Santiago was also bleeding profusely, but seeing the fact that the ambulance was there on the scene, but only one ambulance. They had to take the order for them first, Duram mm -hmm. from Dominica to the medical center, and after that they came back to pick up Mr. Luis um, Custodia to the medical center. The police officer, Santiago, was taken by police car to the medical center, seeing that he was not in so much critical condition. Mm -hmm. After that, we questioned him. We got to know that Santiago, who came home with two fellow of the uh, Republic, who was staying with him because he was saying, again, a quote, he was saying that those people were threatening his life for good. Constantly they were threatening him. And he had those guys then in the house to, you know, uh, accompany him in his home so he don't see lonely in the house. And Tiago was also upset that he started shooting also into the direction. And uh, one of the um, fellows that got scared and he ran away. Luckily, the other one gets shot wounds around his arm, um, with arm, like we said already, upper arm. Two other persons also get shot. And one, the ones um, that we said uh, um, from Dominica Duram. Yeah. And